What's up, y'all? Sparta here. Um, apologies if you hear a lot of wind. I'm outside. Really nothing to do about that, but I want to make a short video detailing my thoughts on using an LG V60, not as a main phone, but as, like, what I essentially intended to use it for, which was for, you know, listening to podcasts at work, listening to music, all these, all this, you know, multimedia stuff. Some video recording, mostly utilizing the phone's camera, mainly for, obviously, for, like, testing, comparing comparing between other phones and whatnot, seeing how well the phone overall holds up over, like, the past three years that the phone has been out. And um, as somebody who, I guess, is one of the people that are known for, you know, LG content and specifically I V60 content I want to give my overall thoughts about how I feel about this phone in 2023 mid 2023 whether what you should get the phone for if you should get it at all and all these other things so the pros that are still here that were always there with the LG V60 um the battery life is still Phenomenal! Like, it's actually pretty crazy that, that, that this is a used unit of the V60. And it's still, like, <laughs> I'm still getting, like, 10, 12 hours of screen on time. Like, at the lowest I've probably ever gotten was, like, 8. And that depends on how heavy I use the phone. And that's without using the dual screen case and all other things like that. Um, so, the battery life is still phenomenal. The display itself is still nice um gets fairly bright i don't really have any sort of issues with it it gets brighter overall than say even phones like the pixel 7a which is a phone that came out this year so to me that's crazy but the display is still great 1080p 60 hertz the 60 hertz is a little bit you know is one of the things that makes the display outdated but overall i feel like the overall package, I slowly start to not care the, about the fact that it doesn't have at least a 90 hertz display. It would have been nice to have 90 or 120, but obviously, I can't. You, you can't really slag LG about something they never intended the phone to have in the first place. Especially when phones at the time came out with 120 hertz displays on quad HD displays, but can only display, but, it go, but can only utilize 120 Hertz in 1080p modes, you know, like the Note 20 Ultra or the S20 Ultra, right? So to me personally, I don't necessarily see an issue with them going 60 Hertz, especially when their camera user interface and their overall software actually runs at a fluid 60 FPS. Whereas every other camera app, so when you're not every other phone's camera app when you're not you when you're not using say a video mode that you're having it dis, that you're utilizing in like a 60 fps mode it won't display in 60 it'll display at a choppy 30 fps so to me that's that's nice it actually makes taking pictures feel way more fluid far more fluid than other phones and honestly it's something that i feel is nice and i really do like the fact that lg took the time to make sure that what that was a thing that they focused on a lot was just the overall operation of the phone um another pro despite the fact that you know lg is out of the market they have updated this phone to android 13 and there has been a recent security patch that came out Android 13 is obviously going to be the last major up OS update that this phone gets. And overall, I might do a video showcasing what the update does. It really doesn't do much. Like, there, it doesn't have material U. There's some things that it changed that LG did to do what stock Android does more, which I don't necessarily agree with, but I'll get into those in another, I'll most likely get into those in another video. But overall, I do feel like them getting the phone to Android 13, it mixes the good stuff I like about Android 13 and obviously some of the bad, but also it keeps a lot of the stuff that I prefer about LG's user, user interface. So to me, that's 
totally serviceable and I don't really have any sort of issues. I don't have any issues with like performance. In fact, the moment I got Android 13, I feel like the performance got a bit better because there were instances where it would be a little choppy on Android 12. But uh, the moment I got Android 13, the phone like snapped back into being smooth. And to me, that's very nice. Um, the, the cameras are still great. I would have thought that after three years going, having this kind of sensor, this 60, the 64 megapixel Samsung sensor, it would have gotten, you know, overplay outdated by now it would have looked worse than everything else on the market. In reality, it doesn't due to a couple key factors. For one, it bends down to 16 megapixels, whereas a lot, the vast majority of phone cameras these days, even when they go up to 200 megapixels, they bend down to 12. And for me, I can definitely tell the difference with that. And even with phones like the Pixel 7a that also have a 64 megapixel sensor, it's a Sony sensor, which is a little bit different. But overall, the, you know, the output is basically the same. It bends down to 16. Um, the, the key thing that I notice is that it's far easier to get closer to a subject on the V60 due to the fact that the camera is not as wide as the Pixel 7a, the main camera. So... I can get closer and actually get more detail and resolution out of it and get more background blur out of a photo compared to the Pixel 7a. Just, and sure, there are the issues like, you know, light clipping and ghosting with brighter subjects. But overall, those are things that I can just go into like a photo editor and, you know, squash out a little bit. And overall, the photos look the way I want them to. And those only happen in certain instances. Um, another pro, obviously the headphone, obviously the headphone jack, right? The V series, since its since its inception, Jesus Christ, was known for its audio, right? The V10 started with the Hi-Fi DAC, V20 came with the Quad DAC, and they've been using the Quad DAC ever since then. Up even to the it got even to the point where the G series adopted the quad DAC when it came when the G7 came and all these other you know things and they even started using the quad DAC and other products after you know LG left the market like in one of their gaming speaker Bluetooth speakers that has a quad DAC and it's honestly been making me want to get it for my for the gaming setup that I have to re you know get back into full swing but you know whatever that's not something i really want to talk about right now um but yeah the quad DAC in here is still fantastic um you don't need to get a higher quality like a, a separate DAC or amp combo with this phone at all to utilize headphones like sennheiser hd 6xx's 650s what or whatnot i feel like a lot of people say you need to do that they still utilize like flac files and like low bit rate wave files i would probably suggest if you're going to get this phone and you're going to get it for music to utilize 32 bit 90, 96 kilohertz wave files if you want the absolute best that this phone could offer in terms of audio in any sort of instance even when even when you're listening with bluetooth headphones it makes a difference like, I feel like a lot of people just like you base this crap off of streaming services. And it's like, yeah, but when you have them locally and you can hear it, it actually sounds fantastic. And it hasn't changed since. There hasn't really been a phone to unseat the V60 in that regard. If there have been, there have been like very weird stripulations and very weird workarounds that you've had to do or that they they're only available in one country and you can't really get any actual information about what kind of DAC and amp it's using. So I can't really compare it based off that it was the ROG phone where no one really has tested it at all and compared it to the V60, even though they both have an ESS Sabre DAC. And technically, what the whichever ROG phone it was, I think it was the six that had it, 
or the five. No, I think it was the five. The ROG Phone Five that had it. It was it was called a quad DAC, but also not called a quad DAC. So it was really difficult to actually compare and see if it was actually better or not. Like the tuning and all this other stuff. There's a lot of different variables to this, and sadly nobody really covered it because no one seems to care about audio anymore and that kind of sucks but like i said the v60 still does great at that um the speakers are still really good they do peak a little bit at higher volumes um and obviously you're gonna have some issues when it comes to things like say certain youtube videos being tuned lower than others what i tend to do is i just tend to turn on the 3d surround sound feature on this phone and it widens the sound stage enough to where it actually gets a little bit louder and it helps with that that's not necessarily something that's wrong with the phone that's just something that you're just gonna have to deal with over time and obviously oh not over time depending on what you're listening to and i i honestly that kind of sucks but it's whatever um yeah i guess we can get into the cons now i don't necessarily have that many cons that aren't the obvious right like the obvious ones being the phone's no longer going to be getting updates so if you're going to get this phone i would highly advise you utilize it for specifically tailored experiences i wouldn't utilize the phone to be in a daily driven phone for me personally but for things like i said for music for podcasting for even for some light gaming the 865 in this phone still performs very well so you can still utilize it for gaming and stuff like that i personally don't do it because I have a you know a one Mark III, so I basically just use that as my gaming phone. But the A sixty five is definitely has definitely definitely has enough power to play games at you know sm- fast and smoothly. So that's not necessarily an issue. Um, I guess the charging could be one thing. It's purported to be at twenty five watts, but it charges at twenty watts. I use a one hundred watt like galleon nitride charger so it doesn't really affect me it tends to charge pretty damn fast so it's not that big of a deal to me but when you utilize the charger that came with the phone it would have that issue and where it would just charge at 20 watts but i think 20 watts is fine 25 watts is honestly fine as well there are phones that are coming out now that claim to be fast charging but only charge at 18 watts and all this other stuff samsung phones kind of sort of charge at 45 watts it's kind of odd but i'm not one of these people that ever needed like 65 watt 100 watt 125 watt charging i didn't really need any of that i think it's totally fine for me to place my phone on a charger roughly like an hour and a half before I have to go to work and then the phone will either be close to fully charged or fully charged enough and due to the fact that this battery is still great it's not really that big of a deal to me personally Um, the phone still lasts pretty much throughout the entire day or the entire night rather for work Um, I guess Couple, one thing in terms of software that I kind of that I kind of wish didn't go away is app pinning. Now it's not the app pinning that you see in stock Android or or ba- that's still on here, where you could just pin an app to pin one app to only show as the home screen and nobody can go out outside of that app. It's when you can go into a, an app. I'll actually open a couple apps here just to show you guys. There used to be a menu up in here where, sorry, where it would say pin app. It's no longer here. And to me, that kind of sucks because it was actually something I liked a lot where I could just pin an app if I didn't want it to actually be closed. And when I close all apps, the two or three apps that I still wanted open would stay open. Now, this probably is just something that they decided to do due to the age of the phone, and, you know, it has 8 gigs of RAM. They probably took it out so that it doesn't affect the RAM going bad quicker than it 
possibly could. So that's a probable reason as to why they took it out. It sucks. It's not something that's like a deal breaker to me. It's just something that I did actually like. And it's just gone now. And that's just unfortunate. Now, it could just be because I have a Verizon variant of the phone. And I also get into specific variants of the phones as well. And the pros and cons to each. Which is very specific. It mainly has to do with software updates. So I guess I'll just talk about that now. I think the software update cycle of this phone, especially after they... um. Especially after they decided to, you know, stop making phones has been very good. And it's actually insane to me that the moment they stopped making a bunch making phones, you know, that people said people said, oh, we want cheaper phones that do everything that other phones do. And they do that. And, and LG put put those phones out and they also tend to do more than what those phones do. Yeah, oh, but it, it doesn't look it doesn't take pictures that look like Samsung or Apple. So, it's not a, it's a deal breaker for me. This phone isn't worth the $800 or whatever the fuck. I'm sorry. I'm not going to get into that rant. But uh <laughs> um where was I going? Oh yeah, anyway. It is nice to see that LG has actually kept their promise in making sure that the last few phones that they put out actually have been getting updates. And to me, that goes to show you that they... W- I don't want to say that, oh, a company actually cares or whatever the fuck. But it seems like they care to some extent for the people that actually liked their products. And to me, that's something that says more to me about LG than any other company, right? Like, it's one thing to be Apple and put out five years of updates for a fucking aging-ass iPhone, and it runs like ass <laughs> the moment it gets the, its final update. That's one thing. But it's another thing to just be like, look, we're just going to give it three, maybe four years of updates, and we're going to make sure it runs the best that it possibly can. Because that's the, that's the pro and con of wanting all, like, oh, five years of OS updates. I don't necessarily want that if the phone can't handle it. And that's what you saw with phones like the iPhone 5, the 5S, the 6. Like, when they started getting, like, the iOS 10s and 11s and all this other stuff, those phones started running like ass. And to me, it's actually commendable that LG decided to keep updating these phones. They could have just easily went out high and dry and be like, you know what, screw you guys, I'm going home on some Cartman shit, and just decided to completely axe any sort of promises with that but you know nonetheless they're still here now you're obviously you're still going to get google play services updates and who knows how long that's going to be those go through google so we'll ultimately see what what happens with that security updates the same thing we'll ultimately see what happens with support with that but os updates are done so we'll see Bug fixes, I would also assume, are done. So whatever the hell happens with bugs, which I don't really have any aside from like some weird things where multi-window won't crop the way I want it to. So I have to restart the phone and it'll recrop the way I want to actually start cropping the way I want it to. One thing like that, but everything else is totally fine. Um, I don't really have that many cons, I would say. I'd say the ultra wide is eh, but I never use the ultra wide, so that's not really something to me. Um, the fact that the phone doesn't have a telephoto lens never bothered me at all, especially when you compare when I compared the shots of the telephoto lens to to I mean to the main sensor cropped into 10x to the telephoto lens on like an iPhone. What was it at the time? crap like a 12 the 12 pro max 13 pro max both of those phones um a lot of the times the iphone would just switch to the main lens and then do it that way and it would still look like ass and it wouldn't look it would look about on par if not slightly worse than the v60 and the v60 still holds up there i still would say that if you want to get macro shots, the best possible way to do it is to go two, maybe three X in onto the main sensor and then do it that way. And then you'll get a good amount of background blur and a good amount of detail, maybe even going to the 64 megapixel mode, which also one thing that I wish they would have fixed is when you go into the 64 megapixel mode, 
it still does this where when you tap it it goes to, it goes to the wide angle for some reason so what you have to do is you have to actually either pinch to zoom or press and hold on the 1.0 button there and actually have it and actually manually crop into 2x to me that sucks but it's a very minor thing and it's something that i wish they would have fixed but because i'll show you guys here when you go into the regular four by three mode go to 2x it just does it right and when you hit it again then it goes into 0 0.5 i think yep then it goes into 0 0.5 so that's something that i wish they fixed obviously they're probably not going to fix it but overall that's just something that i hoped they would have addressed at some point in time um Video is still great on this phone. So video stabilization is still great on this phone. Obviously, in the few clips you guys have seen with me, uh, seen with me recording it where it's a little bit wobbly, that's due to me being stupid and getting up at like 4 or 5 a.m. off no sleep and deciding to record a video. So don't take that as like the phone looking like ass now. It's just me being stupid and we're recording in a less ideal situation for the phone. The stabilization is still fantastic. The way the video looks is still fantastic. Now I'd probably advise people to not use HDR 10 plus because you'd have to color grade it and able to even upload it on sites to make sure it actually looks good but other than that the v60's video capabilities is still as good as it used to be it's still very much capable compared to stuff today it's still a very good 4k 60 video recorder and to me for a phone of this class where you can get for like two three hundred dollars comparing that to say other phones on the market which are roughly around the same price obviously this is an old flagship so it's gonna do that it um it actually gives a good bang for the buck kind of deal and also the front camera records that 4k 62 for the people that actually care about that the pixel 7a doesn't do that which is very weird because i know the hardware is most likely capable of doing it it isn't like the tensor g2 can't handle it so to me that's kind of odd but you know give or take i don't really care i don't use the selfie camera at all but for those that do care the v60 still has that and it's still a it's still a pretty damn good selfie camera too overall i'm not sure i think it's a i think it's either a 10 or 30 13 megapixel selfie camera i'm not really sure i don't use it enough to care so that's why i don't know <laughs> um well, who would i recommend this phone to honestly i would recommend this phone to people that like to like to reminisce on phones on how, on how phones used to be even three years ago you know we lost a very you know significant player in the market you know, and it kind of sucks to see that LG left and that we have all these other manufacturers scrambling to take that spot. Motorola has been the most successful, but every other phone that has come out that people that have attempted to do things new and different get laughed out of the room because at the end of the day, they're not doing it like Samsung or Apple. Even Google is the same way. <laughs> But people say, oh, the Pixel just doesn't do enough. And I'll get into that in a different video. But, you know, um, yeah, the, I'd recommend it as a time capsule device. I'd recommend it as a, even a very capable and good video recorder and photo take, like camera in general. To me, this camera is still very good. And it's kind of crazy to me that I can say that three years later. <laughs> That I, get, that I can get this phone and not really miss much from my Xperia 1 Mark III. So to me, that's very nice. A couple warnings I would probably give out is that obviously since this phone is older and it's from... And LG is no longer really doing anything with this phone, I would probably advise getting more than one unit <laughs> so that if one dies, you have the another because there have been issues with people's screens going out and the U obviously the infamous USB-C port 
has its issues too. So far, mine's has been okay. Mine's has been fine. Mine has been fine. But overall, I would honestly give you. I would obviously give the recommendations to people that just want to want a good music, a very good music player, want a very good camera. And even a multi, like even watching, like if you don't care about the fact that it's only 1080, the screen is only 1080p. And if you get the dual screen, it's a very good emulation station as well. It's a very good phone to use for like watching YouTube and all these other things. So to me personally, the V60 is still very capable and has its uses. I just personally wouldn't use it as a main phone. I know a lot of people still do. And that's very cool. But for me personally, I just don't want to run this phone into the ground. So that's why I would much rather utilize it as like a spare phone doing extra stuff. So, yeah, that's all I really want to say for this video, though. This is Sparta. Thanks for watching. Thanks for the support. Hope you guys have a wonderful Monday. It is Monday. Whatever time of day it is in the area. Like the video. If you like it, show people that are interested in the sort of content and have a good one.